What we do here is go back, 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 back. back. Welcome back to another episode of Monkey Wrench Garage. Today we'll be dealing with a couple engine fault codes, P0013 and P014, which are caused by the intake and exhaust variable valve timing cylinder, which is the common issue for the terrain and equinox between 75 to 100,000 miles. Okay, let's get to it. First thing is to loosen the duct clamp located between the air box and the air cleaner. Use a flat blade screwdriver or an 8mm socket to loosen the clamp screw. Slide the duct off the air cleaner assembly. On the front lower side you'll have one more duct leading to the throttle body. Use a flat blade screwdriver or an 8mm socket to loosen the clamp screw. Slowly and firmly lift up on the air box until the duct releases from the throttle body. Now on the left side we'll be removing the PCV hose line from the air box. Firmly grab the insert and pull. Now it's time to grab the air box. Give it a little rocking and pull up. Now it's a good time to note that the air box was held in from these two push pins and these two grommet inserts on the bottom side of the air box. Now with the air box out of the way, be sure to cover your throttle body with a glove or a bag. Remove the oil filler cap. Now grab the engine covering with a little rocking and pull up. Similar to the air box, the engine cover is held in with three rubber grommets and three push pins. Let's replace the oil fill cap to prevent dust and debris from entering your engine. Now with the engine cover off, you can locate your VVT solenoids on the left side of your engine. Now to release the electric connectors, use a small screwdriver or a right-handed pick to get underneath the tab and lift as you pull up on the connector. It might take a couple of attempts, but stick with it, you'll get it. Here's a closer look of the tab you're trying to lift as you pull on the connector. Now let's remove the connector off the exhaust solenoid. Using a moist paper towel or rag, remove the dust and debris to avoid contamination getting into your engine. Using a 10 millimeter socket and a medium sized extension, loosen and remove the bolts. Be sure to remove the bolts. Removing the bolts will prevent the bolts from dropping into your engine when you're lifting up on the solenoid. To help release the o-ring seal, rotate a time or two using the bolting bracket. Using a right angle pick, use the bolting bracket to pull and unseat the o-ring. Replace one solenoid at a time to eliminate any mix-up. Now let's pull out the solenoid and examine the screen. Sometimes the fault is generated by a clogged up screen and you get it away with a cleaning and an oil change. But in this case, with very little debris present, it's an internal short in the solenoid. Grab that new exhaust solenoid, lube up the o-ring with some motor oil and insert it in the hole. You'll be able to feel the o-ring seating as you insert it. Now it's time to replace the intake solenoid. Just like before, use the angle pick, get underneath the bolt bracket, and lift. Now even though we did not receive an intake fault code, while we're in here, we're gonna replace it anyways. Let's pull it out and take a look at the screens. No debris found, good solenoid. Like I said, we're in here, might as well knock it out. Grab the new intake solenoid, lube up the O-ring, and stick it in the hole. Okay, at this point, let's wrench down those bolts until snug. It doesn't take a lot of torque.
Okay, now give it a once over to good and tight. Okay, now it's to reinstall the connectors. You'll notice that the inserts are shaped differently internally, so it's impossible to screw up the connectors if you did the solenoids one at a time. Even though we heard them both click, give them a little gentle snug to make sure they're on their good. Now it's time to replace the engine covering. First, we're gonna remove the oil cap. Flip the engine cover around to locate the alignment grommets. Now locate the push pins. Slide the cover over, line up the push pin with the grommets and firmly press down. Reinstall the oil filler cap. Remove the glove or bag covering the throttle body. Time to grab your air box, flip it over, Locate the two rubber grommets, locate the two push pins, line them up. And firmly push them in. Line up the air box's lower duct onto the throttle body. Install the lower air box's duct onto the throttle body's inlet. With a flat blade screwdriver or 8mm socket, tighten up the duct clamp. Now back on the left side of the air box, we're going to reinstall the PCV hose line. Be sure that the o-ring is there, no cracks. Firmly grab and insert. Last thing to install is the duct that connects the air cleaner to the air box. Slide the duct over the outlet of the air cleaner. Use the two markings to line up the duct with the air box cleaner. Using a flat blade screwdriver and 8 millimeter socket, tighten the hose clamp. Now take a step back and just like that you've replaced your intake and exhaust VVT valve solenoids. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this episode, please feel free to subscribe, like, and hit that bell notification to stay up with the latest Monkey Wrench Garage episodes.